Welcome to Opus Here. My name is Greg Horn. And we have been talking about gifts exchanges this year. And we've not been talking about physical gifts that we get at Christmas, that ugly tie, that sweater that you wouldn't be caught dead in. But we're uh, talking about those mental, emotional gifts that, unfortunately, it seems like maybe for 20 years we've been saying we're going to exchange those, and yet we still keep them in our lives. And we talked about uh, uh, the first program this week about returning the gift of fear and exchanging it for the gift of faith. Then the second gift that we've talked about this week is exchanging the gift of worry for the gift of prayer. So if you missed any of those programs, we'd encourage you to go back to our website. You can list our podcast at your convenience any time of day or night. And our website is simply hope is here dot today. That's hope is here dot today. Also, I'll let you know if you'd like to support our ministry, uh, we would really appreciate that. Uh, we've got uh, some people that are monthly, uh, regular donation, uh, give us donations. They set that up uh, through our website and, uh, secure online donations. And man, we we'll really encourage you and challenge you to think about doing that. Would you be willing to give a dollar a day, uh, $30, $31 a month to help us uh, pay for this program so that we can bro- help bless people as it's broadcast all over central Kentucky and with the podcast in over 30 different states and six foreign countries in 2018. But I want to talk to you today about exchanging the gift of anger. And I know now I'm meddling because a lot of people, especially Christians, like to say, oh, I don't struggle with anger. Yet, if they're honest, um, I know that there are a lot of people that struggle with anger, and a lot of them are Christians. And, you know, it's being in ministry now for over 15 years. um, I just, I see it a lot. And I want to encourage as we go into 2019 that maybe Colossians chapter 3 verse 8 might need to be your verse for the year. It says in Colossians chapter 3 verse 8, but now is the time to get rid of anger, rage, malicious behavior, slander, and dirty language. And, you know, I do want to clarify, friends, as I say this about anger and talk about exchanging that gift of anger here in early 2019 that you know, anger's not necessarily wrong. In fact, it's not even always bad. But what makes a difference is why are you angry? And what do you do with those feelings of anger? And the question I want to ask you today, what, what are you angry about? Why are you so upset? I think it's really important to understand that anger is never just the root problem. There's always a deeper issue. Anger is simply an emotional reaction to, at least in my experience, to one of three primary emotions. If you want to understand your anger, you've got to find out which of these three that you're feeling. And sometimes maybe it's a combination of all three. It's really important that you know this because it's much easier to deal with the roots than it is to deal with anger itself. And I found in the past 15 years of doing ministry and a lot of one-on-one meetings, a lot of reading uh, books, listening to a lot of programs, uh, um, counseling, doing counseling myself, Christian counseling. You know, usually when we're angry, it's either because, one, we've been hurt, both emotionally and sometimes even physically, unfortunately, Uh, Secondly, uh, because we're frustrated, things just don't seem to be turning out the way we thought they would. And when you're angered uh, by frustration, I want to encourage you maybe to ask these uh, two questions. Would getting angry change the situation any at all? And secondly, is it really worth being upset over? The third reason that I've found like I said, this is not an exhaustive list, but third reason I found, too, that a lot of times people get angry is because they fear something. They feel threatened. or They're insecure. And when you're able to focus on the real cause of your anger, it's actually easier to control your anger. And, friends, as you get older, there's a lot of things that happen to us that are unfair, and they're painful, and they're disappointing. And yet, if... We don't eliminate the hurt, the frustration, and fear from our lives. Uh, We know they're inevitable, okay? I mean, things are going to happen that hurt, 
We're going to get frustrated, and there'll be things that'll try to cause us fear. They are ine inevitable. I mean, that's a fact. But we can learn to deal with these type of things without becoming upset. And anger is a choice. And when we get angry, it's often because we've chosen to be angry, and then we just verbally vomit all over somebody. And, you know, friends, I'm embarrassed to tell you this as your host of Hope is here now for over a year and that I, I've, I've done that. I've hurt people with my mouth and I've done it out of anger and it's not God honoring. I've said things that are not God honoring and it doesn't happen often, but it's happened a few times in my life. And, you know, I've gone back to and apologize, but I've let something built up of fear and anger or frustration and I let it get way, way too deep. And then when it finally came out, it just did not come out in a God honoring way. And, you know, the good news today is, is that as Christ followers, we have Jesus' help who wants to help us and his power to help us learn to control our anger. Psalm chapter 4, verse 4 says, Don't sin by letting anger gain control over you. Think about it overnight and remain silent. You know, I've got a good friend uh, named Ann, and she says that, you know, uh, giving me wisdom for my life it says you know maybe you just need to sleep on it greg and things usually look better in the morning or at least differently after you've had time to sleep on them and you know the other thing is to run it through the filter of maybe two or three other people's uh, lives people that are you know mature in their faith and mature make mature decisions in their life and age is not necessarily a sign of maturity there's people that or 25 that are more mature in their decision making than 55 year olds. But maybe run it through their filter and say, Hey, here's what I'm dealing with. What do you see the same situation that I do? Or am I looking at this wrong? And man, I've been so thankful to have so many people over my life. So guys that, uh, men that have really uh, spoke some truth in love and say, well, I can understand why you're hurt about that or angry about that, Greg, but, Maybe this is how they're thinking about the situation. And friends, uh, I'm thankful for that wisdom because it's helped me avoid saying things in some situations that I would have really greatly regretted. And I know we've all done that. But man, let's try to grow and mature as followers of Jesus here in 2019 and be careful what we say and not try not to say things out of anger. And Matthew chapter 15, verse 18 is just a great verse for this situation about anger in our mouths. It says, those things that come out of the mouth come from your heart. And friends, I, I know that when I've said things or people have said things to me in anger and hurt, I think, you know what, man, they're really hurting. And I heard Wayne Smith one time say, hurting people hurt other people. And friends, if you're hurting today, I want to greatly encourage you try to talk with a pastor in your church or go see a Christian counselor and I know sometimes people say well, I can't afford to do that well friends we usually can afford to do what we want to do and what I mean by that is you know we we might have to make some sacrifices we don't get Starbucks or maybe we can't stop even at Speedway or McDonald's and get that cup of coffee we have to bring it from home instead and um I don't know what that is. Or maybe you have to brown bag it at lunch for a while, for a month, and not be able to take, you know, uh, go out to eat with everybody for a month. But you could pay for a counseling session. But I just want to encourage you to deal with whatever heart issues you have because this Matthew 15, verse chapter 15, verse 18 says, those things that come out of the mouth, they come from the heart. And to me, really, if you look at anger, it, it's really a heart issue. Uh, Solomon, uh, the wisest man that ever walked the earth back there in Jesus' time, uh, Proverbs chapter, or the Bible, when it was written, uh, chapter, Proverbs chapter 4, verse 20 through 23 says, Pay attention, my child, to what I say. Listen carefully. Don't lose sight of my words. Let them penetrate deep within your heart, for they bring life and radiant health to anyone that discovers their meaning. Above all else, guard your heart, for it affects everything you do. 
that Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23 has been a verse that uh, really has spoken to me over the last 15 years since I got into got ordained in ministry and actually for 10 years was in vocational full-time ministry and now do it bivocationally but above all else guard your heart for it affects everything you do friends i want to encourage you i want to challenge you right now to look at your life look at your schedule look at your calendar look at your phone what are you filling your heart with because the fact of the matter is friends Whatever we fill our minds affects our heart, and then eventually it comes out in our mouth. And the way we treat others, and the hurt and the anger that we feel. And that's why, you know, Romans chapter 12, verse 1, I love it. It says, Take your everyday, ordinary life, your sleeping, eating, going to work, and walking around life, and place it before God as an offering. If you struggle with anger and you're going into a meeting or a conversation that can cause you to get a little emotional, I'm going to share that verse in James chapter 1, verse 19. I know I've already talked about it earlier, but I really believe it's a word for somebody today. Be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to get angry. Maybe you need to write that on a post-it note, put it in your bathroom mirror, and in your wallet, in the dashboard of your car, in your cubicle at work, uh, just places where you'll see it. And I know that I know that when you are quick to listen and slow to speak, it enhances your ability to help maybe understand where the other person's coming from. Then also protects you from causing damage in a relationship, whether it's you know a work relationship, a romantic relationship, through marriage, dating, family relationships, with children, with grandchildren, with uh, siblings. I mean, the list goes on and on. I mean, that is a powerful verse in James chapter 1, verse 19. Be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to get angry. But friends, one of the things that I want to encourage you to do here in 2019 is to exchange that gift of anger for the gift of love. Exchange that gift of anger for the gift of love. Obviously, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13 Verses 4 through 8, I do a lot of weddings. And um, I did 20 weddings in 2018. It was just amazing. A guy that's been divorced, that God would use him to help do a lot of weddings. And I'm fortunate to be a part of those people's great days and meet with them. We talk about marriage. And, you know, some people want that read, First Corinthians chapter 13, verses 4 through 8. And, you know, it's not just for romance. It's for any re- relationship. But it talks about that love is patient. It's kind. It cares for others more than itself. I mean, you know, the fact of the matter is, friends, that to be loving to other people is not easy. It is a choice. And you have to look and see it's not what you feel like doing, but what God wants wants us to do. It talks about love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It's not proud. It does not dishonor others. It's not self-seeking. It's not easily anchored, angered. And the big part to me there is you want, uh, at the end of verse 5 in chapter 13 of First Corinthians is it keeps no record of wrongs. But friends, man, that's hard to do. But if you're really going to love somebody, you're going to have to do that. And I hope that you'll tune in with us tomorrow because I'm talking about, I want to talk to you more about how we exchange the gift of anger for the gift of love. I'm Greg Horn, and this is Hope Is Here. CMI is your full-service human resources provider in Central Kentucky. For 15 years, CMI Human Resources has taken great pride in helping organizations and people work. Whether it's employee handbooks or help in filling a position, no job is too large or too small for CMI. Contact the professionals today at CMI Human Resources, 859-296-2800 or online at cmiconsulting.com.